गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स सतरेकाल नमस्कार हाउ इज एवरीबडी हाउ आर यू गाइज हाउ इज योर प्रिपरेशन गोइंग ऑन सो दिस इज माई सेकेंड क्लास विथ यू विद द नाइनटीन बैच ओके सो वॉट आर वी गोन रीड दिस क्लास सो प्रीवियसली वी स्टडीड अबाउट मेटाबॉलिज्म इन नाइट्रोजन सो टूडे वी आर गोन स्टार्ट ऑफ विथ फोटो सिंथिस okay so it's just going to be introduction and uh, we are going to study about chloroplast or in that much of detail you have already studied in cell the unit of life akshay hello okay there are other people comment on tell me that you have been seeing me you are being tuned with us okay so hello shubh sandhya ka akshay okay so so this class will make it much more interesting much more innovative and let's see how photosynthesis is taking place how many people hard work to prove it that it is taking place in plants then how is the structure for where the photosynthesis is taking place we call it as photosynthetic machinery that's nothing but your chloroplast we studied about metabolism of nitrogen symbiotic nitrogen fixation radhika good evening jyotsa jyotsna hello Akshay, I'm good. Thank you so much. How are you? Okay. So we went inside the soil and we saw how the nodule is getting formed inside the soil. Then we studied fate of ammonia. That is how ammonia is getting assimilated inside the plant. I hope all the passport users have answered the 10 CPP question. If any problem, कुछ दिखते हैं उसका आंसर करने पे, please comments पे डालिए. We'll try to help you out. Good evening, Smaranika. I think that's how you pronounce your name. I've been thinking from yesterday that how do you pronounce your name? So I think Smaranika is how you pronounce your name. I think so. Nice name actually. I've been using a lot of ATP to pronounce it. Okay. So question which most of the students have gone wrong. Okay, they've pressed up the option B, but the answer is C. So this uh, scientist, I think his name is called Saigri. we know gratsky okay he is one of the scientist he actually found out that he found out that clostridium is the nitrogen fixing bacteria okay just a second okay clostridium is the nitrogen fixing bacteria okay thank you smaranika okay oh, i hope so i have pronounced it properly so this is all memory based question kids you have to memorize this okay we don't want you to, to lose at least a mark in your exams so that is why these are all goes to memory based question please fix it in your inside your brain who actually discovered the nitrogen fixing bacteria it would be winogradsky which is a bacteria will be clostridium Yes, we are going to make this class much more interesting. What we did than from yesterday, and for the students who have got newly tuned in into our class, most of them know me. So scientists were new to me in yesterday's CPP. Okay, Akshay, there are many questions can come up like this. Okay, some of the questions, some of the scientists, it keeps popping up because NEET is a competitive exam, so such complicated questions come in. we will thrive through okay if there are certain questions are there we will push it to cpp and our contest question so that you understand and you remember also what kind of questions and scientists you have to memorize with okay so i was telling any new students in here for this class anybody who don't know me okay i'm abhinaya i'll be handling this chapter photosynthesis in higher plants class 11 we'll be brushing up the initial details of this chapter that is introduction and we'll study so many other you know scientists who proved it and we are going to study about chloroplast my name is abhinaya lokesh okay hello indrajit nice to see you online now see before studying anything and everything in your textbook or you know you're listening to a lecture or something which is out of your book something innovating you're studying you should ask your question okay 3w and 1h every time you have to question yourself 
that what it is, why is it happening, where is it happening and how is it happening. This is a clear cut picture. How many atoms are there in meat? Nikita, I will get back to you with this question. Okay, you have to give me some time. At the end of the class, I will give the answer to your question. Okay, so this question you have to ask yourself. That is, how is this taking place? Where is it taking place? And what it is actually? And how is it taking place? So, for our buddy photosynthesis, we have been studying this from class 6, I think. Okay. So, what is it? Let us give a decent definition. I will write everything in a short term. Photosynthesis, I will write it in short forms actually, is a biochemical process. I will write a biochemical process. Okay. Where carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrates. Okay. So, this is the reaction in autotrophs, your plants where carbohydrates are synthesized in the presence of light, okay, chlorophyll, chlorophyll is the pigment which is going to help you out with your light dependent reactions in the chloroplast of a cell, you can say it as a plant cell also, too much of writing is not it, uh, red red color, but this has to get stuck into your brain as we are going to try further in the concepts of this chapter, you should know what is the definition of photosynthesis. Why is it taking place to synthesize carbohydrates or else how our plants are going to synthesize carbohydrates and how we all are going to depend on it, ok. It is only because they fix up non aqueous organic matter that is nothing but carbohydrates. Where is it taking place in our beautiful chloroplast, ok. We have been talking about eukaryotes here. Now see, to see anything, any process, let it be a cookery show. Now see, suppose you have been making something, uh, let us take an example how, how do you make chapati? Aapko aata dalna hai, pani dalna hai, usko se golna hai, then you have to make chapati, you can add a little bit of salt also. What is going to come out is your rotis. So photosynthesis is something like that. What is the input that you are giving to the plant for photosynthesis to take place? Yes, you have been giving it carbon, carbon dioxide, water, light, chlorophyll, mineral nutrients. You studied about the role of mineral nutrients in mineral nutrition chapter. So, you know the emphasis of each element, how they are going to help up with photosynthesis and you have so many number of enzymes in the cell to take over photosynthesis. Overall reaction of photosynthesis is we take in this is the plants which tell us that what is the overall reaction in them. They say we take in 6 molecules of carbon dioxide, 12 molecules of water and we are going to give out carbohydrates 6, C6, H12O6. Then we are going to give out 6 molecules of water and 6 molecules of oxygen. This is what the plant will tell us, <laughs> okay. So this is in pre presence of light and chlorophyll okay students we all know this is the overall reaction of our photosynthesis what is the output which we are getting i've written there carbohydrates oxygen and water how does it take place now there are two complex reactions light reaction that is called as light dependent reaction okay then dark reaction they are light independent reaction these are the two reactions by which our beautiful plant is going to fix up the carbon dioxide into carbohydrates, okay. Now, what is this I have been focusing on? What are, what are you able to see on the slide? On this, I have been saying it as global impact of photosynthesis. Agar ek process pure plants mein ho raha hai, to uska impact pure dharti pe hoga na, the global impact of photosynthesis. What it is, is I have put two such pictures. On the left side, if you see, I have put up the primitive earth. Primitive earth means, sadio pele hamara earth, mane hamara globe, kesa dikthata, the same way how we have been seeing in this picture. There were no plants, there were no oxygen in the atmosphere, okay. So, what led to the evolution of our primitive earth to the present earth? 
then you are able to see the color, I have put in yellow color, this is the present earth. Okay. Billions of years it took to convert our primitive earth to the present earth. What is the prime process which converted the life form which was present in primitive earth? Those were all cyanobacterians. As they came up, what they were doing? They were respiring. So, they took up all the oxygen, gave up the carbon dioxide and they were also photosynthesizing. So, they took up all the carbon dioxide in their atmosphere. You know, at that time there was so much of volcanic eruption, there was no oxygen at all in the atmosphere. So, this chota chota cyanobacteria jo form hoye the, unhone photosynthesize kiya tha, carbon dioxide lekar oxygen they liberated out. As the oxygen came in, many oxygen absorbing or you say oxygen respiring microorganisms, then we came up the larger you know your dinosaurs, your larger carnivores, they came into existence and this is how the evolution process went. That is from the cyanobacterians to what we are on present earth. So, what has photosynthesis done? It has led to the evolution of primitive earth to present earth by liberating two such dominant gases, oxygen by photosynthesis, respiration, what is getting out is carbon dioxide. So, these two gases have led us to the evolution of primitive earth to the pre present earth. Okay. So, one global impact of photosynthesis is maintaining these two gases in our environment. We have oxygen and carbon dioxide in our environment. Why? Because of these two processes, balance of gases. Okay. Second thing is the food chain in the present earth. We all depend on the plants, isn't it? We depend on the plants for food. Animals depend on plants. So, the cycle of food chain is been maintained by photosynthesis in present earth. Great, right? What a great thing. Such a small process. All the life present on the earth is because of our photosynthesis. Clear? Thank you, Radhika. How do we prove it? Now, I also come and say that, uh, you know, there is a microorganism where I see it is converting pink color into yellow color. So, you will obviously ask me any evidence for it, right? The evidence is to prove photosynthesis. We will go step wise, we will make it much more interesting. Elementary set of experiments means basic set, you will be do, you would have done this in your school actually, okay? Elementary set of experiments means simple basic experiment. What we are going to show here is we all know that the end product of photosynthesis is starch, one type of carbohydrate. To show the presence of starch in the leaf, what we did was, we took variegated and half covered leaf. Variegated means differently colored leaf. If you have seen certain leaves, there will be red strikes, yellow strikes, only some parts will be green. And we took a completely green leaf, okay. This is a completely green leaf. This is a variegated leaf, okay, for your imagination, I am going to draw off this, okay, there are different kind of colors in it, okay. So, we expose this to the sunlight, this variegated leaf completely and a half covered leaf, that means we covered it with a black paper and then we exposed it to the sunlight, we poured iodine solution on this leaf, surprisingly we saw that Whichever area is green, we saw it con got converted into blue. So, iodine actually indicates the presence of starch. So, as we put a drop of iodine onto this leaf, wherever it was green, it got converted into blue. So, this indicates that in presence of sunlight, only photosynthesis takes place and the end product is starch. Okay. So, the next thing which we are going to decide, one more, you know, confirmation that it is starch only which has been formed that is by KOH as indicator. You see this image, okay. I have placed it on the right side. I am highlighting with the laser pointer also. You see this image, right. What is happening here? We took the plant, only a part of leaf. We kept it inside a bottle. There is cotton placed here, dipped in KOH, okay. It was dipped in KOH. Now, as the leaf got exposed to KOH, what is the characteristic of KOH do you think? Anybody on comments? What is the characteristics of KOH? Does it absorb something? 
Yes, Jyotsna, Radhika, Akshay, tell me. Okay, so KOH actually absorbs carbon dioxide. Okay, it absorbs carbon dioxide. So, when the leaf got exposed to KOH, it took away all the carbon dioxide. There was no photosynthesis. If there is no photosynthesis, no starch. If you put the iodine on this specific region, there was no blue coloration. Okay, no blue coloration indicated there is no starch. So, we are done with our elementary basic set of experiments to prove that the end product of photosynthesis is starch. Let us come up to the advanced set of experiment. You see that person over my head, the person just above my head, Jyotsna CO2, CO2, okay. Good, Radhika good, yes it absorbs CO2, okay. Advanced set of experiments, we have all these people, okay. So, generally all the scientists, why did they achieve this? Now, let us start off, you know, not start that we already have started our class. To keep our enthusiasm and zeal further in the class, let me give you a quote given by Albert Einstein. Again, I am going to start off with him. He said that a ship is always safe at the shore, but that is not what for it is built for. That is, a ship is not built for to sail near the shore itself. It is built for sailing, right? So, we are built for achieving something. We are not born only for maintaining humanity. We are built for achieving something. I think that is what this set of scientists thought and they have achieved something by proving photosynthesis to us. So, we also are going to achieve something, okay, by cracking our meat, okay. Isn't that a greatest thing? We are going to achieve something, greatest thing on life, giving importance to why we were born, yes. So, let us get into the experiment given by Joseph Priestley, okay, the guy right over my head. What did the scientist do? He actually proved the role of air in photosynthesis. So, air he said, air is actually required for photosynthesis, whereas this gas is oxygen and carbon dioxide coming. So, he did four combination, permutation and combination by keeping a bell jar with which, I mean what did he take for doing the combination is, he took a candle, he took a mouse and he took a plant. Let us see with the four bell jar, what did he do and what did he conclude with? Okay, interestingly, we are gonna draw out whatever our Joseph Priestley has told us, candle in a bell jar, okay. So, in one bell jar, Priestley took up a candle, okay. Then what did he observe? Okay, let us come into this game. We are just going to put up all the combination what Priestley suggested us in this four bell jar and then one by one we are going to say that what did he observe. Okay guys, candle in a bell jar, next is candle and a mint plant. Candle and a mint plant. Okay, I will draw it in green color. My drawing can be little away from reality, please adjust with me, this is a mint plant, okay. Then what did he say? Candle and the mouse, Mushak, Ganpati ji ka avatar, not avatar, sorry, Vahan, okay. Candle and the mouse, here is the candle, oh my god, how am I going to draw a mouse? Okay, I will just try out, I hope it looks like the mouse, okay. I hope it looks like the mouse, okay. So, this is candle and the mouse. So, what did he do with this fourth combination? Candle, mouse and the plant. Oh my god, I have come into a task here. I hope this looks like the mouse, okay. So, candle, okay and next is the plant. What did he observe? So, 
in the first case Priestley observed that the candle was lit only for some time and then it got extinguished that means it stopped burning it has taken up all the oxygen it, it was burning and when the oxygen got over it stopped burning after some time okay I'm not going to nice drawing <laughs> thank you Radhika okay so I'm just going to write out bullet points I'm not going to explain it so it's keep a pace with me whatever I am saying in the second observation there was candle and the mint plant what did he see okay the candle was lighted up okay it, it was it actually stopped in the first case but it was lighting that means the gas which is required for burning of the candle was been produced by the plant okay burning of the candle in the third case after some time candle and mouse mouse died candle stopped burning okay so i'll write it here stop again in fourth the mouse was alive the plant was alive and the candle was burning so i'm just gonna put it here as alive so what can you conclude from here is there are certain gases which is you know which which has been used by mouse to breathe okay candle to burn up and those gases was given or restored by the plant which was actually it was emptied up when the plant wasn't there okay so with this Priestley concluded that role of air is much more essential for photosynthesis it is carbon dioxide which is taken in and oxygen which is put out okay so he concluded the gas which got burnt away by the candle taken away for breathing by the mouse is actually restored by the plant he didn't know it was because of photosynthesis beautifully he told the role of air in photosynthesis let's go to the next advanced set of experiment who is that Wan Jan engine house okay little bit difficult to pronounce it is Wan Jan engine house Wan Jan engine house was a Dutch scientist you again see it over my head this scientist also gave a great experimental you know prediction and he also proved it that photosynthesis takes place by liberation of oxygen how did he do it so i ye dono scientists jo aap dekh rahe ho hamare joseph priestley jo the he was born in uk he was a chemist actually and this person one jan engine house ye dono bye bye jaise the they had a lot of understanding among themselves as being the scientists so 1770 was when Priestley he gave his experimental setup you know and he proved the role of air 1771 our one Jan engine house I said he was a scientist too okay he was a chemist I'm sorry he was a biochemist he was a Dutch biochemist and a scientist so what did he do he took up the same bell jar what Priestley took and he found out that oxygen given out during light is much more greater than given than the oxygen given in the shade time that means when the sunlight intensity is low what did he do he took the same bell jar set up like Priestley and he took an aquatic plant look at this okay now we come into the task of drawing it he took up an aquatic plant aquatic means the plant which grows in submerged or on the surface of water so he took up elodia elodia is one such aquatic plant okay there was water inside the bell jar okay what did he notice was in two such scenarios two such events when the sunlight was exposed to the bell jar okay the green parts evolved oxygen bubble more and more was seen but when the sunlight intensity went low let me use some other color okay he mean to say when he kept it in the shade there was no sunlight no sunlight then 
the amount of oxygen bubbles liberated by these green plants they became low there was just one two so he proved that oxygen is liberated during photosynthesis the level or the number of bubbles was more in sunlight when the plant was exposed to sunlight but it was less when it was kept in the shade that is what our engine house did okay any questions anything that you guys haven't understood please put on the comments clear people clear students kids come on to the comments please are you awake are you sleeping what are you doing tell me on the comments okay so the next advanced set of experiment see there are five of it actually two of it beautifully we finished it off next two is it was given by julius von sachs again the person over my head in 1854 he was a german botanist what did he do okay he actually proved that there is some green substance which i see in the plant it is actually chlorophyll now okay it was been called as green substance by this person one sex which is actually present in a green part okay which we call now as chloroplast and he said that glucose is been stored in this green part as the end product of photosynthesis what did julius von sachs do he said that end product of photosynthesis is starch okay that is what he did see these are all very simple to say but the experimental setups at that time what these people did huge contribution seriously appreciating what a contribution they have proved something very big which where which has helped for the life to sustain on earth okay concept of action spectrum this is the fourth experiment kids okay it was been given by theodore wilhelm engelmann in the year 1882 what did he do he did a marvelous thing you know he went to his lab he took a prism okay he took a plant and he also exposed it with two such monochromatic lights let us draw it okay i hope my diagram is little bearable in physics you know that when white light is passed through a prism it is you know broken out to its components i don't find violet color here for now please keep this as the violet color and the red color okay this was been exposed and also blue color okay this was been exposed on a plant which was called as cladophora this is what was been took by our who the scientist yes guys are you awake are you understanding till now please let me know through our comments anything which you want me to repeat let me know guys one second okay so when it is exposed to the plant he saw that the action of liberation of oxygen was high in red and blue color so this is almost similar to that of action spectrum he devised a spectrum okay he saw that the oxygen evolution or the action of photosynthesis was high in red and blue this is very much similar to that of absorption spectrum which we studied as we advanced in scientific technology so it was very much similar to that of absorption spectrum by chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b you'll study about the action of these chlorophylls completely when you know we are going to study about light reaction we are going to study about photosystems then we'll get to know the role of chlorophyll a and b clear okay the last advanced set of experiment was given by so this person's picture i haven't given okay if you want to read about this person he's done a huge lot of you know contribution into the scientific field into the science field okay so you can read about him his name was cornelius van neel so what did this person say he proved of saying that photosynthesis is a light dependent reaction what did he do kids yes students he demonstrated that a green plant okay that a green plant 
and a purple bacteria, which pore as a purple sulfur bacteria it is. Okay. They photosynthesize in the presence of light and in presence of hydrogen donating oxidizing agents, what they can be? Okay. It was water in plant and it was H2S in purple sulfur bacteria. That means, he is what is he actually trying to say in a clear way is photosynthesis takes place in the presence of light and also presence of this oxidizing agents. Okay. You know photolysis of water, no? You must be knowing what is photolysis of water. Keep that concept into this, you know, experimental setup and think what can happen. If H2 and H2S is the oxidizing agent, what are going to be the products out with photolysis of water? Photolysis of water is the reaction which we studied in non-cyclic phosphorylation, okay. So, based on that only I will raise a contest question. So, trigger your mind what can happen with this water and H2S, okay. Previous class contest question, which step of nitrogen cycle maintains a balance between nitrogen taken and given back to the atmosphere? I think you guys were too attentive in the class, many of them came up with the correct and the wrong answer also. Appreciating everybody who attempted this, okay. It was Akshay. Akshay, good Akshay, you have been being attentive, nice, he gave the correct answer, correct answer is denitrification, it is the one which has been maintaining balance between nitrogen absorbed and given back to the atmosphere, okay. My contest question, if you have been thorough or you, you were with me along with all the experimental, you know, evidences, we proved it, we drew it also beautifully. Raise this question into your brain and answer it. Oxygen evolving during photosynthesis is observed in which green plants or purple bacteria or both of them or only in cladophora? Yes, give me the correct answer, people. Think about it. That's why I told you photolysis of water. Okay, photolysis of compounds which can give up oxygen. Yes, come on, come on. Jyotsna, good attempt. Radhika, Akshay, Indrajit, what are you guys doing? Come up, people. Think, think, think. See. Okay, so we are done. Five, four, we are done with your countdown. Let us go to the next slide. What do you see there? Jo chand do planets dikh rahe aapko. Kya dikh rahe aapko? What are you able to see? Okay, Smaranika. See. Okay. So, we are going to read about that organelle chloroplast. You know, it is beautifully maintained inside a cell, it is beautifully developed. Okay, to main give up this photosynthesis, such a small organelle, it is leading to the formation of carbohydrate. It is the site where light energy is converted into chemical energy. So many photosystems are there, it is beautifully made up. You have to appreciate this organelle actually. So, why is it called as photosynthetic machinery? Because it is an equipment, it is the place where photosynthesis is happening. Okay. So, how did it come into origin? We have been talking a lot about primitive earth. How did photosynthesis change our primitive earth to the present earth? How did it actually come into existence? Is not that an interesting thing? Okay. So, this is not after your exam point of view. This is something you may imagine. How did chloroplast come into existence? Now, there are two key things which you see inside a chloroplast. Yes. One is it has a double membrane. What is the second character it has? What is the most important second character it has? It is also called as autonomous organelle. Yes, people. Jyotsna, Akshay, come up. Tell me the second characteristic of a chloroplast. Yes, it is said autonomic. It can divide by its own. So, it has its own genetic material. It has its own DNA. So, scientists when they started, okay, thinking 
that how chloroplast came into existence, they actually matched up these two characters with a prokaryote, okay, a cyanobacterium which was there at the primitive earth time. Even that had a double membrane and a DNA. So, they came up with a clear cut, a shot, you know, they explained through endosymbiosis that chloroplast would have emerged. Radhika, good, it has own DNA. So, how that is, is think this is a eukaryotic cell, okay. I will just highlight it with a laser pointer. This is a eukaryotic cell. So, is eukaryotic cell ne kya kya tha? Okay. It was just roaming like that in the water or anywhere. Suddenly, a cyanobacterium, you see a cyanobacterium here, it was accidentally engulfed by this, what is it? Eukaryotic cell. As it got engulfed, this cyanobacteria, it is double membraned, it has its own DNA and it is photosynthetic also. So, that is why it was photosynthesizing in the cell. Now, I say it as endosymbiosis, we studied in the previous class also what is symbiosis. Now, this cyanobacteria is been fixing, what is it fixing? It is fixing carbon dioxide into carbohydrate. It is photosynthesizing for the cell and the cell is in turn giving it nourishment, okay. So, what has happened? Accidentally, a cyanobacterium was been engulfed by a eukaryotic cell. So, this cyanobacteria became into chloroplast as evolution went over because it is getting shelter from the cell and cell is also keeping it because it is photosynthesizing, okay. So, interesting is it, this is how was the origin of chloroplast by most of the scientists, you know this is how they say that by endosymbiosis, this chloroplast resembling to that of a prokaryote or a cyanobacterium came into existence. Now, let us study chloroplast in detail. Okay, we have studied this in cell, the unit of life. Yes, let us label this. You see here, this is the outer membrane. Okay, as I said, double membrane. This is the inner membrane. I am just going to write it in short forms. Okay, the membrane is outer and inner, the space in between them is called intermembranal space. Okay. So, it has its own DNA as we said and it, these are the starch grains which you know on photosynthesis starch grain is getting stored. These are the ribosomes. Now, let me see your concentration level, let me see how much you have understood chloroplast. What is this organelle guys? Not sorry, not the organelle, the part inside chloroplast. Yes, what is this called as? Stack of thylakoids, what is it called as? Okay, Jyotsna, the single part is called as a thylakoid. Now, see, I have actually magnified it, this single one and one single form or a part of this is called as thylakoid, okay. Akshay, you have given me three answers. I do not know which to pick it up in this. You are going to tell me only what is this one organelle called? What is it? Guys, come on. Smaranika, where are you? Come up. Yes, yes. Good, good, good Akshay, good Smaranika. See people, there is a slight difference between grana and granum. Okay. Now, I have been highlighting on one stack one stack, one stack is actually called as granum. So, you would have given me the, uh, if you would have given me the answer granum, I would have been, you know, much more happier, I would have appreciated you much more, that is okay, no problem, I think you have not understood the difference. Granum is a singular form, when you see a stack of it, stack of thylakoid, one single stack is called as granum, when many are there, it is called as grana, okay, this and all which you see, I will use a laser pointer. This all which you see is called as grana, one single thing is called as granum, okay. Now, let 
let's get inside the chloroplast and ask it what else are you made up of so this discoid shape of thylakoids you see here it is disc shaped why is it disc shaped why does it have so many bends and contours is to get exposed to the sunlight more it increases its surf surface area to capture much more sunlight that's why it's in disc shape which one your thylakoid so thylakoid sitting one upon the other makes your one granum so these granums inside the chloroplast are interlinked see one thylakoid actually extends into another stack of grana i'm sorry guys my diagram is extremely pathetic please bear with me i think yes akshay grana is plural granum is singular good okay so this stack is getting connected by fret lamella or stroma lamella guys you should know the labeling of chloroplast it is very important question when you see it in your descriptive questions that is in your board exam and also many such questions come through your entrance exams also from chloroplast to read it properly it is also called as fret lamella or stroma lamella okay i'm putting an or here or stroma lamella so which is the stroma here the matrix of chloroplast is called stroma where your dark reaction takes place maranika good okay so this is what is the entire chloroplast we have actually we have gone inside the chloroplast and we have magnified each part of it so this is the entire grana each grana is made up of a thylakoid okay so this membrane system which you see this granas is the site where light reaction takes place that's when there are many photosystems systems we just talked about chlorophyll a and b the pigments which absorbs the light and converts it into chemical energy stroma is the place where dark reaction takes place so this light okay when it is fixed in the form of photons it is converted to chemical energy to form atp and nadph this is been used in stroma for reducing carbon dioxide to carbohydrates that is what is called as dark reaction how beautifully maintained right nicely build it up chloroplast such a small organelle so many things inside it we have to actually appreciate it two aspects of chloroplast at the end of the class what it is is two aspects are body chloroplast does is conversion of light energy to chemical energy this is what we call it as light reaction i've put it here where adp is getting phosphorylated to atp and nadp is getting reduced to nadh this is what happens in the light reaction this is one such aspect of chloroplast the next aspect is this atp and nadph is formed is called as assimilatory power assimilation in digestion means something getting absorbed and digested okay how is it happening how are we absorbing carbon dioxide and reducing car into carbohydrate is by utilizing this assimilatory parts to reduce carbon dioxide into simple carbohydrates this is called as calvin cycle or dark reaction two such things happening inside the chloroplast now in the next class we are going to read about light reaction how is it taking place cyclic non cyclic photophosphorylation then we are going to read about dark reaction that's nothing but your calvin cycle okay before we jump into the core of the chapter we have done with brushing up the introduction and chloroplast any problem kuch dikkat hai aapko samajhne mein any issues you have is it clear come up with the comments please is it clear anything you want me to repeat up yes people are you guys there are you being live with us yes is it clear okay so we are done with this thing summarizing what and all we studied we introduced photosynthesis we also gave it a global impact what is its global impact to our earth early experiments proving photosynthesis see you have to know about each advanced experiment questions come from this topic also photosynthetic machinery okay we have studied about that too 
Thank you guys for being tuned with us for all the CPP, I'm sorry, for all the passport users. There is CPP from our side, 10 questions, please answer those. Excel in the concept which we studied today. Till that, good night, Shubratri and good luck.